I opened DSP Gaming in 2010. You know, it's one of the reasons why the channel had a big decline. Right? No, but the audience that, that says that does toxic things to me will do it toxic things to me if I'm the nicest guy on the planet. It's just because they're toxic people looking to create a narrative. We talked about this two days ago. It doesn't matter what I say or do. They're just there to make me look like a villain. If you're allowed to do it, then I'm allowed to do it too. You don't get to be an asshole and hide your content because you're a scumbag to me. Which is the truth is that the guy's a scumbag to me, right? Okay. Well, some people seem to be saying suggestion box. Let me see if I can uh, pull up the old suggestion box. Let's see. We're going to sort by newest first. We're going to scroll down. Let's see if I can find the last one. Uh... Look, I understand that it's not always possible to have everything ready for a stream. There's definitely going to be things that you're going to have to go and grab. You're going to have to stall and buy yourself some time to get something. I get it. That's how streams go. But if you know that you're going to be doing the pre-stream and the suggestion box is going to be an option for the pre-stream, you might want to have it pulled up. And it's especially weird to me that he doesn't have it pulled up already because we all know that he never turns his laptop or his PC off. And had the browser been accidentally closed for whatever reason, we would have heard about it. Because every time that happens, he manages to tell us all about it and how he has to do so much work in order to open up all of those tabs again. And if the problem is that the browser keeps refreshing and taking him back to the top of the list, instead of sorting by new, he needs to be sorting by not responded yet. And just remember to respond to all of these suggestions after he addresses them on the pre-stream. Even if it's something as simple as leaving a heart or leaving a period in the comment. There's multiple ways around this. It's not that complicated. And the fact that he hasn't done anything yet has done this segment multiple times tells you a lot about how he cares about the stream. We read this one. Okay, I'm finding the right one. We read that one. We read that one. I think we read that one. We read that one. All right. My apologies if we have missed some of these. Uh, but let's just start from here. All right, because this one I don't recognize. So, turn back on comments for videos that have the comments turned off. Um. Well, here's the deal. With that, excuse me. I don't know what you mean. If you can clarify. Technically, there shouldn't be videos with the comments turned off, but there probably are. All right. Allow me to explain the history of DSP Gaming and what happened with this channel. Okay. Oh, we're off to a terrible start for this suggestion box. Holy shit, boys. Not only did we not understand what this person was talking about and asked them to clarify as if they were going to be right here in chat right now, but we couldn't even get a vague answer without him telling you that he was going to tell you the history of what happened on the channel. Grandpa DSP is going to sit here and tell us about all the way back in the day, 2010, he went full-time content creator. I opened DSP Gaming in 2010. I told you. At that time, I was very popular on YouTube and everyone liked me, okay? I operated this channel for about four years and I never really saw anything negative thrown towards it. When I moved across the country in 2014, all of a sudden, boom, I was hit with tons of negativity, toxicity, and trolling activities. And obviously it didn't happen exactly like that. He had detractors far before he moved across the country. In fact, there's documented detractors from 2010. So let's not sit here and act like moving across the country was some sort of catalyst that changed public opinion on you. There pretty much has always been a group of people that did not enjoy DSP's gameplay and thought he was an obnoxious asshole. It was definitely fewer people back in the day, but they still existed nonetheless. And that's before even addressing the fact that pretty much everybody in the fighting game community hate him before he even started a YouTube channel. And that obviously can't carried into his YouTube channel as well. I noticed attitudes change towards me, right? I started having people try to purposefully ruin multiplayer sessions. I saw people try to ruin chats. I saw people start leaving crazy amounts of negative comments on my videos. And at that time it was basically just, oh, this video sucks. And who cares? Leave the negative comment, download the video. I don't give a crap. You can leave that, right? It's not a big deal. Then in 2015, it ramped up. Multiple false copyright strikes against my channel and I got swatted. Yeah, do you guys remember the other day when he was praising the SOK because they didn't make money when they were detracting? If you don't, here's a clip. Because these are not the sons of Kojima. The sons of Kojima did not monetize their content because they felt like they actually had a moral leg to stand on. In a lot of cases, in retrospect, I will admit they did. A lot of the things that they said about me were correct. Yeah, those people, those were the people that were reportedly behind both the copyright strikes and the swatting. That's why it was so insane to me that he was giving them any sort of praise. Because at the time of the swatting, he was saying that they were actively trying to get him killed. They were trying to murder him. But according to DSP during that rant, it is better morally to try and have him murdered than to make a little bit of money off of his name. I very much disagree, but hey, it's DSP's life, not mine. 
And then in 2016, it continued. And basically, it just kept escalating. It got to the point where it was a meme to hate on Dark Side Phil. And people were actually, get this, competing to leave the most toxic, hurtful, nasty, disgusting comment they could on my videos. Why would they do that? Because then that comment would be highlighted in one of these negative videos about me. There were actually people who would take clips of a playthrough and then look at the comments and look for the nastiest ones. So it wasn't that these people genuinely cared. They just wanted attention in a video. But the thing is, the things they said were ridiculously harmful. Some people were doxing me and my family members. Some people were leaving racist, sexist, awful things, accusing me of pedophilia. You know, the worst level of shit you can see on the internet. And I believe what he's referencing here is the comments that would appear in all of those this is how you don't plays. Because that is why DSP got rid of the comments. He thought that if he got rid of the comments that this is how you don't plays would lose an aspect of what made them so interesting. And I would have to admit that I think that this is how you don't plays did suffer because they no longer have comments. It's not really that big a deal. This is how you don't plays are still fans fantastic for what they are, but it did lose that little extra something. And while I'm sure there were people who were saying terrible, nasty things to him in his comments as there always have been, I don't think that those comments were the ones that were trying to be featured in the this is how you don't play, because typically a this is how you don't play would highlight comments that were about DSP being terrible at the game and just calling him stupid. Why would anybody want to put somebody's dox information inside of a video? That seems like a good way to get yourself banned very quickly. Same goes for legitimate threats or any sort of hateful slurs. I think DSP is just conflating the two things yes he was absolutely getting horrible comments but those videos really had nothing to do with them um and it got so bad in 2017 that i actually got contacted by some of my longest running fans behind the scenes and they banded together and started writing me and were like just so you know it's to the point where it's so bad in your video comments that like we don't even want to watch your content anymore like it's not even a fun productive place to be because the moment we press play we look down and there's insanely bad stuff down there now we know you're one man and you can't moderate every single video or whatever so we recommend you just turn your comments off. And I was like, okay, I guess this is what we have to do. It was just this pro ongoing process. Like I said, it started around 2014 and every year it just got worse and worse to the point where it was like the breaking point. All right. Now, DSP is notorious for putting words in people's mouths and making them say things that they actually never said. So I'm either pressing X to doubt on the fact that these people existed at all, which maybe they did, or rather that they banded together and told him that he needed to get rid of all of his comments because they couldn't enjoy the content if the comments were on for some reason. This isn't the first time that he's explained away turning off the comments in this fashion. But the part that has never made any sort of sense to me is why these people couldn't just watch the video and move on with their day without going to the comment section. I mean, legitimately, how often do you go to a comment section if you're not going to leave a comment and if you go to a comment section it's nothing but a toxic cesspool maybe you decide not to leave a comment but you're still going to wind up watching the content i would imagine because it's content that you enjoy why would the comment section have any sort of impact on that especially when a place like the king of hate forums existed at this time if you're looking for the dsp style community you can go there and talk to all of those people and write all sorts of posts like i said it's just never made any sort of sense to me um now, here's the thing. Did I want to turn off comments? Absolutely not. But YouTube didn't have a real way to do to fix things back then. It was either comments on or off, or if you're going to sit there and moderate all your comments, right? So, basically what I did is I did turn off comments. And, yeah, it hurt my channel. Absolutely it did. It hurt my channel. It hurt my content. You know, it's one of the reasons why the channel had a big decline is because people can't, there's no sense of community. But there already was no sense of community because the comments were so vile, anyone who wanted to be positive couldn't do that, you see? So, it was either like, be completely negative or have nothing. I would rather have nothing than have complete negativity. Maybe other people disagree and would rather just have comments on and let these idiots just have full reign of whatever they want to do. Uh, I didn't want that and I turned it off, okay? And unfortunately, this is one of the points where I'm going to have to say I really don't know what the best course of action for DSP would have been when it came to his comment section, especially back then. Because in a way, he's right. There's nothing that he could do about all of these people coming to his videos and saying all of these horrible things about him. The comment section was doing him no good, so why would he care if he turned off the comments completely? And while I personally don't agree with turning off comments because I think that if you can't handle the heat, then you need to get the hell out of the kitchen, I'm also not a lol cow like DSP and I don't have this huge hate mob after me because I don't act like a scumbag on the internet for everybody to see. In fact, the majority of my comments are very pleasant and I appreciate all of the comments that you guys leave. I love reading them. But like I said, when it comes to DSP's comments, maybe he did make the right move in just getting rid of them. Comments were off for a good three, four years, but I continued on. I had video views. People watched my streams. They contributed. You know, I continued on. Turning off video comments did not kill me. I might have killed other content creators. It did not kill me. All right. But then when I returned to YouTube full time in 2021, 
I left Twitch because of the big fiasco over there being insanely unprofessional and treating me awfully. And by acting unprofessionally, you mean that they kicked you out of the partner program for saying hateful slurs, right? And then you demanded a public apology from, I guess, Jeff Bezos himself, as if that was ever going to happen? I just wanted to clarify so that we're all on the same page. I said, well, now if I'm going to be back here full time and all my efforts will be focused on YouTube, then I want to get a community building back up again, okay? And so I wanted to look into turning on video comments. And lo and behold, in the four years my video comments were off, YouTube instituted a new system that would catch comments and basically put them through a filter. It would auto filter for words that were harmful. So any racist words, any really nasty sexual words, you know, stuff like that would be auto caught and filtered out. I also had the ability to put in certain catchphrases and words like I could put in, you know, street addresses and shit that people were trying to dox and it would catch those and filter it out. And I would absolutely kill to see how long that list of things that get auto filtered out actually is. Because we all know that his banned word list, it was crazy when it came to Twitch. Thanks to all of the different leaks that came from the rogue mods. Because we all saw that there was some pretty mundane words that you were just not allowed to use in DSP's chat. Words like Subaru, words like horse, and even helicopter. I'm sure you could tell exactly why those words were banned. But it's still very peculiar that somebody would have to go out of their way to ban those, like I said, very mundane words. And it's probably a huge waste of time to do that anyway because everybody knows if you want to get around a word filter like that all you have to do is swap some letters for some numbers or add a couple of symbols or add a couple of extra letters in the way and all of a sudden the word filter won't be able to catch it people are going to find a way to say what they want to say any other comments that essentially were not deemed as ultra harmful go into a queue that i look at and i, I read the comments and i approve them all right and then they show up so now you can leave comments on all of my videos for the last three years and all you gotta do is wait a little bit. They don't show up instantly, but as long as it's not some kind of a toxic ass comment, it shows up on my video within like 24 hours. Cause I just got, I go to the queue a few times a day and I review the queue and I approve, 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 approve. Now I'm gonna be honest, it's not foolproof. What I've noticed sometimes if I'm checking the app on my phone, I see certain comments. If I then go to the comment section on my desktop, I see different comments. How does that make sense? It should all be the same, but YouTube is a piece of garbage with people who code really weirdly. And it's just so odd. I wish it all worked well and it was 100%, you know, good and kosher. It's not, it just doesn't work half the time. I personally cannot attest to this happening. I read through my comments on both the desktop version and in YouTube studio, and it all seems to be the same to me. Maybe this is just another one of those DSP only problems that he seems to have all of the time. But of course this is YouTube's fault because they don't know how to code their own website, dude. They're like book smart, but not street smart. So apparently they don't know how to code, make that make sense, but that's what he thinks. So I know for a fact there's people who leave comments and they never show up. And then they say, Phil, what happened? I didn't leave a toxic comment. I was trying to be positive. What happened? I'm like, I don't know. YouTube ate the comment. There's nothing I can really do. Imagine that. Another instance where there's nothing that he could do, dude. He did everything correct. You know, I, I have to work with the tools available. If I open comments completely 100%, that whole troll element will just come right back. And they'll just continuously flood the videos with really nasty, toxic stuff on purpose. And it'll go right back to how it was pre-2017, where everyone hated the comments and didn't want to watch the videos anymore. So... The way I see it is it, the lesser of two evils is to have the comment filtering system where I can at least get some of the comments on the videos, right? And I'm sorry to those whose comments get eaten, okay? Now, what this comment is saying or this suggestion is saying is turn back comments on all of your videos. I'm not even gonna lie to all of you. I completely forgot that we were even doing a suggestion box or that this was a suggestion at all. DSP's one and only talent is the ability to talk nonstop without actually saying anything of importance. I'm not sure why we had to go all the way back to 2010, talk about this is how you don't place in detractors in order to respond to this suggestion. But I guess I'm glad that we managed to circle back and we're finally gonna get a proper response, maybe. I thought I had, but maybe what happened was in 2021, all that happened is all new videos at that point had comments turned on, maybe that's the case. Because I know for a fact, you could still leave comments on my old, old videos from pre-2017, all right? But I think you're right. I think there's no comments on any videos from 2017 to 2021. They're all off, right? So I guess the question is, how would you do that, right? Like for example, right now, if I went to my channel, I'm looking at all my videos. And as much as I would love to sit here and watch this boomer try and figure out how YouTube works, I really don't think that that's worth your time or my time. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward again. And I click on, I don't know, select all. All it says is 30 videos selected. Now, how would I select all videos forever on my channel? I don't know, <laughs> you know? And also, you know, what are the actions that I can do here? Edit, uh, there is comments. On, with comment moderation. Pause comments or turn all off. That's what it says, okay? So it looks like it's possible. But I guess the question is, how do I select all of my videos on my channel? I think I hit select all, now it says all videos selected. What does that even mean? Does it mean all videos on my channel forever? And now if I try this and I hit comments and I hit on but comment moderation basic, 
I could try it. Let's see what happens. You're about to update the selected videos. The update cannot be stopped once it is started. I understand the implications of this action. Well, this is just turning comments on for moderation. This isn't deleting videos. This isn't, you know, destroying my channel. Uh, I guess we'll try it. You ready to see what happens? This could fuck everything up. I hope not. What do you mean that this could mess everything up, DSP? This is not an explosive device. You are not disarming any sort of bomb here. It seems pretty straightforward. You selected all of your videos and you were changing all of the comments to be on, but with moderation on. What do you think is gonna happen? You think it's just gonna delete your channel for some reason? Updating videos. It's safe to navigate away, but wait before making another bulk update. So let's see what happens. I'm trying it. I hope it doesn't screw the channel up. Basically what this should do is have comments on all videos, but with a moderation feature. So you can comment on any video, but don't expect the comment to show up right away. It's gonna go into my queue and I have to approve your comment, okay? There you go. Exactly, what could possibly go wrong? Well, with YouTube, they'll probably think that I just tried to delete all my videos, right? I actually hate that I wasn't far off and that he genuinely thought that for some reason that this action was going to do irreparable damage to his channel, like deleting all of his videos. Kind of a shame it didn't though, because the world would probably be a better place without any sort of DSP gameplay in the world aside from this is how you don't plays. Knowing YouTube, I mean, I'm not even joking, doing anything like this on YouTube is a huge liability because YouTube doesn't work right. It's just, they, they act like they're the best site on the planet, like they're a bunch of brainiacs. In reality, the coders at YouTube are some of the most ridiculous silver spoon in the mouth people all went to ivy league colleges they all get coddled and treated like they're some special you know snowflakes they sit there eating pomegranates and, and doing uh you know meditation classes instead of doing work i'm not kidding they actually have like exercise meditation classes that they do during their work day over at google um i wish i was exaggerating i'm not okay are you jealous dsp i thought you had your dream job why does it matter what these other people are doing at their job especially when their job is to operate the platform that you rely on every single day to continue to upload to you would think that after all of the things that youtube and google has had to put up with in regarding him that he would be a little more grateful especially because he puts all of his eggs in this one youtube basket but of course not any sort of gratefulness is thrown right out the window when it comes to dsp he can't be grateful for anything because he thinks he's some sort of self-made man that went out and did it all on his own when the reality is that he relies on everybody around him to do pretty much everything for him and i'm not just talking about these websites that offer him a platform to upload his garbage to i'm of course referring to the pay pigs who fund his sinful lifestyle as well um but yeah like it's just weird that the way that they operate as a company so i would not be surprised that i just said oh bulk update all of my videos to turn on comment moderation you know so if anyone's to have the comments off now you can comment on it and this like deletes half my videos Let's see what happens. It's running right now, okay? It says you can navigate away. The thing is, like, this could take... I mean, DSP Gaming is a 14-year running channel. It could literally take hours and hours for this to take effect. But I guess we'll see what happens. Hopefully, it doesn't destroy my comment section. Uh, we'll find out later today, I guess. So there you go. So there you go. For anybody who hasn't seen DSP take a suggestion and actually implement it, you just saw it right now. Wasn't that something? Suggestion taken. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh... This is just another person saying short in the podcast, and you know I'm not going to even care about that. A classic. Because you knew it wouldn't be a suggestion box if somebody wasn't telling him to shorten the pre-stream. And once again, I'm inclined to say that if this many people are telling you that this is an improvement that they would like to see when it comes to your content, you should probably look into implementing it in some fashion. But of course we can't do that because Grandpa DSP had to tell you all about 2010, dude. Imagine if we had to shorten the podcast and we wouldn't have gotten that segment. We'd all be out. Uh, set the DSP versus the internet playlist on DSP Reacts to order videos from newest to oldest. I think I did that. I think I've done this one. I think I, when I saw this comment come in, I actually went ahead and automatically did it. Yes, I did. I did. So now the latest clip is the one that shows up, not the oldest. Because for like a year, the original video was the one showing and nothing recent. So I changed it. So now it's the most recent video that shows up there. So that one, that, that suggestion was accepted and already applied a month ago. So there you go. Damn, this has to be some sort of record. Two suggestions given to DSP that he actually implemented? DSP is getting his groove back. Cool. Uh, I have to I have to remember when I do suggestion box to periodically check for contributions and stuff because I don't see them pop up anymore. Uh, so no, no nothing there. And shit. Oh, I clicked on the wrong... Shout out to Maddie, who became a super supporter member of the channel. Thank you so much, Maddie. I missed it because I was reading the suggestion box. Sorry about that. I appreciate that, Maddie. And I will have to keep my eyes peeled 
periodically for for uh, contributions. Okay. All right, let's continue. Now, again, this is out, uh, these suggestions are outdated. These are from like a month ago. Let's listen to this. I think part of the toxicity in your tech and stream stems from how you act when you play the game. It's rage and calling people names, and it fosters behavior from the audience. What? No, but the audience that, that says that does toxic things to me will do it toxic things to me if I'm the nicest guy on the planet. It's just because they're toxic people looking to create a narrative. We talked about this two days ago. It doesn't matter what I say or do. They're just there to make me look like a villain. Well, let me stop you right there, DSP, because nobody has to make you look like a villain. I don't think that anybody can justifiably say that showing clips of somebody saying something that they did in fact actually say could be considered as trying to make them look like a villain. You said those words. You said them just like that. And a lot of detractors actually include far more context than you give them credit for because it only makes you look worse. So no, nobody's out to make you look like a villain other than yourself. And this comment that he just read seems pretty straightforward. If you act like an asshole online, if you're toxic yourself, of course, negative and toxic people are going to start surrounding your content. And DSP's content in general is just kind of a shining example of that. But if you happen to need any more examples, you can look at any other lol cow and you will continue to see that pattern. These people who are constantly raging out on the internet and getting frustrated with all of the things that people are saying about them are the exact same people who are going to continue to be poked and prodded at so that they get those reactions. So when it comes to DSP's fighting gameplay, if he's getting frustrated and heated and he's got his adrenaline running or whatever he likes to say, and he starts lashing out at the game and at the people in the chat of course people are going to come by just to poke and prod at him some more but i'll agree with you that there is a rage issue when i play fighting games um particularly when i i'm losing and i don't understand why and i feel like i'm not learning i've always said that if you're playing a fighting game and you lose as long as you learn something from the loss right then it's not a loss it's actually you're just collectively gaining knowledge that'll make you better over time but if you play a game and you just get trounced and it's like dude i have no idea why that happened so I, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna learn. That's what's frustrating. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and I, that's something I need to work on. I hate that every time he talks about how much salt he experiences when playing these fighting games, that he acts like some sort of high intelligence, big brain, high IQ individual. Because he loves to pretend that he's okay with losing if he thinks that he's learning something and actually making progress and getting better. But that's absolutely not the case. The guy cannot stand losing. That's why just about every time that he loses a match or sometimes even a round, he's automatically going to excuses. Things like lag, dropped input, spammy characters, pattern play, rollback, netcode, really the list goes on and it's infinite. Because because really any excuse will do the job as long as the blame isn't being put on him. But he always loves to fall back to that, oh, as long as I'm learning, I'm okay with losing. Because even he knows that you can't win them all and expecting to is completely ridiculous. It still doesn't stop him from expecting to win all of the time. He just also happens to understand that that's an insane expectation. Oh, let's see here. There are times when I'm turning into your podcast. I love it. I want to send some support, but I don't. You don't do shout outs till the end of the show. My work can sometimes call me away and I miss the end of the podcast and sometimes the stream and I miss the opportunities to support. I think I speak for most people when I say we really enjoy the instant feedback from tips to super chats. My suggestion is you do shout outs throughout the podcast. I think that would make it more engaging for the audience and guys like me who like these shout outs won't put it off and possibly lose the opportunity. Um, although I appreciate that and I understand where you're coming from. The problem with that is on the podcast, I have segments that are focused. So for example, I might have a topic I really want to cover today that's important, whether it's a news story or it's an update about something going on on the channel. And I got a story to tell or I got a lot to explain. And if I'm every two seconds stopping what I'm doing to do a shout out and stopping what I'm doing because of shout out, shout out, shout out, we'll never get through it. And a lot of the times you lose your train of thought, right? Kind of a bold assumption that he's gonna have to be stopping every two seconds for a shout out. When very frequently he can manage to get to the conclusion of the pre-stream where he's supposed to be doing shout outs and he tells everybody that he doesn't have anything to shout out and that he's opening it up to open Q and A. It just leads me to believe that there wouldn't be anything lost if DSP did do immediate shout outs. And in all honesty, they might even move the pre-stream in a direction that actually makes sense because so frequently what he's doing these segments where he thinks that he has a lot to say and a bunch of things to address and focus in on he winds up just talking himself in circles so maybe these immediate shout outs would make him move on to a different topic and maybe even get him back on course to the original topic hell even this suggestion box probably would have benefited from that earlier when he was talking about comments back in 2010 if he would have gotten a tip or a super thanks gotten off track and then had to remember what he was even talking about he would have answered the suggestion way faster maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part though it probably would have just taken him twice maybe even three times as long to tell us a story that nobody asked for it would be like you know i'm telling a story and then i have to keep interrupting myself and i know where was i uh da, da, you know and so that's that does suck and i agree with you <clears throat> it makes sense to get that instant gratification it does at the same time you know that the end of the podcast is when i do all the collective shout outs correct so because of that just watch the end of the podcast every day and i mean we can't be here live i get it it's on demand just open up the show you scoot to the end of the podcast when you know the shout outs are and there you go and fyi within 24 hours of every podcast uh being uh posted 
there's AI generated timestamps that are in the in the description. <clears throat> so you can literally click on the timestamp to skip exactly to the point where the shoutouts begin. And there you have it. This just seems like such a strange thing for DSP to be doing because he's constantly asking people to support the streams. And this person is outright telling him, hey, I would be more willing to support the streams if I didn't have to wait till the end of the pre-stream. And DSP's response is, I really don't give a shit. I'm going to continue to do whatever I want. It just seems kind of productive if your end goal is just to make money. And we all know that that's DSP's end goal. That's all he cares about. And if he wanted to meet this guy in the middle, if he wanted to make a compromise so that they're both happy, I don't know why it would be impossible for him to just read shoutouts in between segments. He he has dedicated segments like DSPN or Phil's Day Off or whatever. He could absolutely, before he activates the pop-up in OBS, read some of the super chats or tips that he's received. That way it's more immediate satisfaction than waiting to the end of the pre-stream and DSP isn't being constantly derailed. And if people really wanted to be a part of the conversation, they could send those super chats and tips to contribute to the segment that DSP just finished. Okay, the, the instant shout outs are definitely available during gameplay because in gameplay, you can pause the game. You don't lose your train of thought. The game's still running right? <laughs> For me telling, you know, doing a segment that's very targeted at a certain topic, to interrupt it constantly and interrupt that stream of consciousness or that train of thought or that thing I'm trying to say, it doesn't benefit. And I, I know for a fact because it's happened. There's been streams where I'm, I'm doing something and I get interrupted. I come back like, what the hell was I saying? And then I can't even get back to the point that I was trying to make because I can't remember what it was. So, I agree with the, the notion of the instant gratification for contributions, I just don't think it works during certain segments of the podcast. It would make me lose my train of thought and ruin that part. See? Well, the pre-stream is really poorly structured anyway, DSP, so I don't think that anything of value would really have been lost. But of course, it's DSP's way or the highway. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, all of these dents apparently agree. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, Great goal. Some great goals for more money. Okay. Would be reacting to fair criticism videos of DSP, like the Turkey Tom documentary and other This Is How You Don't Plays. Even the haters donate for stuff like this, bringing back this for patron goals and tips, etc. And of course, I think that this is a great idea. Obviously, I'm biased because I'm a detractor, so my opinion really doesn't matter here. But some people absolutely would be willing to give him money if they knew that he was going to be watching detractor content and have to face all of the things that detractors have to say about him. It would also be a great way for him to make people pay him to shit on the detractors, which is something that he loves to do. You remember how he was going to try and use the documentary as a platform so that he could dunk on the detractors and debunk all of their bullshit? Yeah, he could essentially do that but make the dents pay for it and the few times that he has interacted with some of the detractor content on dsp reacts was some of the most interesting content that's been on that channel pretty much ever i mean really the highlight of dsp reacts is when he watched that mr ludicrous video and that gta 3 video and i'm not just saying that because it brought mr ludicrous out of his early retirement well first of all i tried reacting to it. this is how you don't play do you remember the nightmare that created because apparently it's totally okay for people to take my content off of my channel react to it on theirs, create their own content that then can be popular and give them views and monetization and popularity on the internet. That's okay. But if I try to do exactly the same thing that they've been doing for a decade, I shouldn't be allowed to do it just because I'm Dark Side Phil. So when I tried to react to this is how you don't play Metal Gear Solid 2 last year, two years ago, two years ago now, uh, Evil AJ tried to take it off the internet. Yeah, he literally tried to hide the video. He's like, oh, I don't want him to do that. Well, wait a minute, hold on. <clears throat> it's either it's good for everyone or it's good for no one. If you're allowed to do it, then I'm allowed to do it too. You don't get to be an asshole and hide your content because you're a scumbag to me. Which is the truth is that the guy's a scumbag to me, right? So wait, we're praising the SOK now, but we're going to shit on Evil AJ again? This dude is constantly flip-flopping back and forth between the different detractors that he actually likes. Because I very specifically remember him giving both the Outsider and Evil AJ shoutouts. And here's that clip just to prove that I'm not making this up. You want to watch good stuff? Again, watch the, the fun This Is How You Don't Plays and stuff. Those are fun. Those are intelligent. You know, the, the evil AJ stuff. Who was the other one? The outsider, was it? Who made good ones? I heard those are really good. Watch those. And while I don't necessarily agree with privating the video just so you couldn't watch it, DSP, how are you going to be upset that someone decided to private their own video, regardless of what the reason was? It's well within their ability to do so. And I'm not quite sure why you would be surprised by him taking this action because you know that he doesn't like you. You say yourself all of the time that Evil AJ is the person who spearheaded all of the hate about you online. Are you really going to sit here and be upset that given the opportunity to once again strike at you that he took it? So... Someone else had already archived it and sent it to me and I reacted to it anyway. He couldn't hide it and there was nothing he could do about it, okay? Plus, what's hilarious about the situation was months earlier, he had outright given permission on his Twitter account for me to react to it and then he tried to rescind it later. It doesn't work like that. So anyway, 
that was the one I ever did. Then after that, I was like, do I really want to get into this whole problem now with reacting to content and people saying that they don't want me to do it and arguing and everything? Legally, do I have a right to do it? Yes. Do I want to fight with every motherfucker out there who's just a little brat who thinks they can do whatever they want and I'm not allowed to do the same thing? No, I don't want to be arguing with every little brat on the internet. So that's why I basically stopped doing it. I was like, you know, I did the one. I actually had a good time, but I really don't want to waste my time arguing with children. Yeah, guys, he doesn't want to spend his time arguing with children. That's why he sits in his little hug box where it's a one way conversation and he gets to say everything that he wants to say and nobody can retort because that's obviously a far better use of his time. Don't you think arguing with real people on the Internet is for the birds? He'd rather sit here and scream at the corner demons in his room all alone. That's literally what they are. They're adult children. They're like babies inside of adult bodies because they're just idiots with the way that they act. OK, so there you go. And that's just absolute gold coming from the guy who can't go a single day without making a scat joke and hasn't matured mentally since the age of 12. Now, as for the Turkey Tom documentary, again, this is something where if I'm going to react to something, I want to be sure that at the very least, the person on the other end is not malicious in their intention, okay? And they're not trying to purposefully create an endless cycle of drama for personal benefit, okay? I was actually strongly considering doing an interview with Turkey Tom after his documentary about me until I did a little bit of research and I found out some of the really disgusting things that he had said on the internet about people, including me. Things like, oh, I just can't wait to milk this person or I'm milking them more for content. Man, I love it when they comment. I wish that they would just react to my documentary so I could get more, I could milk them further. And it's like, what? I mean, seriously, that's, that's so fucking vile to say something like that. And just casually too. Like, oh, it's just a casual statement I would make on the internet, it's fine. And no one will call me out for it. It's just okay, we're milking people left and right. For, you know, it's like, what? And I want to point out that it took Turkey Tom quite a while to address DSP in that fashion. All the while, DSP was bringing up Turkey Tom's name about every time he possibly could. And just like always when DSP talks about another content creator, it wasn't necessarily the most positive light either. Everything was either a backhanded compliment or just straight up negative. And I'm not at all surprised that Tom just decided to not deal with DSP because when you're dealing with somebody like DSP and they're wasting that amount of time, it's just not worth doing anymore. You're literally publicly admitting to using people in a toxic and negative way for personal gain. That is vile. It's completely immoral. Why would I then want to give you more attention, right? Because it would have the potential to bring more eyes to your channel and more eyes on your channel and your content DSP would mean more money in your pocket. It's actually a pretty straightforward equation. So that's when I said, nah, forget it. Even though people said his documentary on me was kind of down the middle. It wasn't, oh, I hate this guy, but I like this guy. It was like down the middle kind of fair. Although he was harsh in certain parts, which I expect. And I expect that from every documentary about me with the mistakes that I've made over the years, right? Um, but basically, yeah, uh, after that, I was like, wow, it opened my eyes to it. And I'm like, no, I don't think I'm gonna be reacting to anything unless I'm absolutely sure that someone is trying to cover something neutrally or fairly. And so that's why I'm considering later this year reacting to the June the King documentary, because I know he attacks things from a neutral perspective. Now, by the end of the day, even June the King might hate my guts for the stuff I've done over the years. And you know what? What's fair is fair. He has the right to have his own opinions. But at least I know from the perspective he's going to try to cover it neutrally and fairly. I'm curious what kind of information he even dug up on the internet from stuff like the Street Fighter days because nothing exists. Like, no, it's just like forum posts from forums that are dead, IRC discussions that were never archived. So I have no clue what he's gonna find about stuff, you know? And this isn't the best example of it, but DSP as of late has been trying to get out in front of this June the King documentary. He's already come out and said that he won't be watching anything to do with his finances and probably won't watch anything that has to do with Panda Lee during the documentary. Which means about the only thing that he's going to get out of the documentary is things involving the Street Fighter days from way back when. And while DSP can act ignorant as to all of the things that are on the old SRK forums that are now dead, anybody who's watched the Dent Sea Scrolls knows that there's plenty of old DSP history to be found in some of those forums and honestly some of the best moments on alphaism radio so there's really more than enough content of dsp back in those days to paint a pretty good picture of who he was at the time and all of the things that he was up to and that's of course before getting any testimonials from people who actually had to deal with dsp back in the day because you can pretty much ask anybody that was in the community at the same time as dsp and they will have nothing but negative things to say about him because he was just a piece of shit all of the time and always has been and i think, I think that's gonna be fascinating and I don't think June the King's intention is to continuously milk Dark Side Phil for six to eight months. You know what I'm saying? He's going to put out the documentary. He's interested in doing an interview with me after, depending on how my react goes to his documentary. Um, and then after that, we move on. You know, 
So, and I really do hope that we get that interview with June the King in DSP. Not because I think June the King is all that interesting because he's about as milk toast as you get, but because I want to see DSP try and justify not watching the full documentary when it comes to his financials to June's face. I would also like to see him try and explain away any of the questions that June actually has for him after all of his research. And even if all of that is a nothing burger and it's a total fluff piece and June the King doesn't confront him on anything and walks away with a positive outlook on DSP somehow, watching Phil interact with another human being is just all around entertainment regardless of how it goes but speaking of entertainment i want to take a look at some of the comments from my last video so of course big ups to the 60 skulls i love you guys go to boehm says when i originally saw this clip i was thinking why the actual f is he telling his audience this not only does he put the blame on cat but he's coming off as the absolute worst husband ever he could have just said something came up we're gonna reschedule or something like that i really can't stand him at times and that's one of the things that was so odd to me about that entire situation situation is he didn't have to say anything if he didn't want to and he definitely didn't have to throw cat under the bus and explain the whole thing and make it her ultimate decision but that leads us right into our next comment because senji the gamer 3829 says tips how to be a great husband number one don't be this guy and while on the surface that might seem like a really short list it actually encompasses quite a few things some of those things include not being self-centered helping your wife with the chores not throwing her under the bus and be able to read somebody's emotions enough that you don't continuously put them in worse situations so again just don't be dsp and pope super kame jizzler says this man is absolutely the worst doesn't know how to use a washing machine as a 42 year old man through his mom i mean wife under the bus for canceling the stream also he can't seem to take the hint that cat wants nothing to do with him his stream or the dents and that was pretty much an entire summary of the last video dsp doesn't know how to do his own laundry he threw cat under the bus for canceling the stream and it was made very clear that she's not interested in doing it and it stresses her out so i thank you for the summary but i want to thank everybody for watching the video especially if you made it this far hopefully i catch all of you guys in the next video but until then make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that snortex ah!